Hi, I'm Pete Jackson from Jackson 5 Medicine, and by the end of this video, you should be able to draw the pain pathway and know some of the body's own endogenous pain control mechanisms. So first, let's have a look at the bigger picture, from stimulus to sensation. So first you have a painful stimulus, and this activates your nociceptors, and these are your pain receptors. Now these signals transmit down your primary afferent fibres and synapse at your dorsal root ganglion. This nerve then enters the spinal cord and travels up for about two vertebral levels before decussating across and going up the rest of the way to your medulla. Now this tract is known as your spinothalamic tract, and this is responsible for your pain and temperature sensation. Now, from the medulla, this then goes up into your thalamus before synapsing with another neuron which travels to your somatosensory area at your postcentral gyrus. Now there are a number of physiological factors that can affect this system. Now firstly, there is the body's own inflammatory response to tissue damage. This is something that your painful stimulus will often cause. Now this inflammatory response causes sensitization of your nociceptors through the actions of bradykinins, substance P and prostaglandins, all of which are normal components of your inflammatory cascade. Secondly, it's important to note that there are two types of primary afferent fibre. Firstly, there's your A-delta fibres. These are faster, they're myelinated, and have a low threshold for response. These are thought to be responsible for your instantaneous response to pain, and that sharp sensation that you feel. C-fibres, on the other hand, are slower, they're non-myelinated, and have a high threshold for response. And these are thought to be responsible for the more long-lasting pain sensation, and that dull ache you tend to feel. Now, the body has a number of ways in which it regulates pain. And the key message here is that it does this by regulating the number of signals that pass through your spinothalamic pathway. And there are three key ways in which it does this. Firstly, this through your body's own endogenous opioid system. Now these endogenous opioids bind to your opioid receptors, and these are G-protein coupled receptors, which further down the line prevent the release of neurotransmitter through the blockage of calcium channels, and also hyperpolarize the cell to prevent the propagation of action potentials in the spinothalamic pathway. Now these include your endorphins and your enkephalins, and act both peripherally and centrally. Secondly, there's a descending inhibitory system, and this arises from your periaqueductal grey matter, and it's primarily serotonin and noradrenaline mediated. And this does pretty much as you'd expect. It's a descending system which acts by reducing the amount of signals passing through your spinothalamic tract. Now lastly, there's your gate theory system, and this is a more peripheral system. This works by the activation of mechanoreceptors, which in turn activate an inhibitory interneuron which affects the amount of signals passing into your spinothalamic tract at the dorsal root ganglion. And this is why sometimes when you rub your knee, it tends to feel better. Lastly, it's important not to forget that there is also an emotional component to pain. So there will be a response in areas of the brain associated with memory and emotion. This is most notable in the limbic system. Now, depending on past experience, this can have a suppressing or attenuating effect on pain response. And this is known as neural network theory. So now let's look at how some drugs can affect this system. Firstly, NSAIDs. These inhibit COX-2, an important enzyme in the production of prostaglandins, which in turn will prevent the sensitization of nociceptors. Next, there's paracetamol. And its actions aren't fully understood, but it's thought to cause its anti-inflammatory properties through the inhibition of COX-2 and possibly COX-3. Opioids cause their effects through the agonism of the body's own endogenous opioid receptors. Next, tramadol. This acts as a weak opioid agonist initially, but then its metabolites provide strong opioid agonism. It also increases the amount of available noradrenaline in the inhibitory descending pathway by preventing its reuptake. Its metabolites also act as serotonergic agonist in this pathway as well. So this concludes the video. So now you should be able to draw the pain pathway and know about some of the body's own endogenous pain control mechanisms. Thanks for watching. I've been Pete Jackson from Jackson 5 Medicine.